Okay, so section 2.2 part B video starts here. And at the end of my video, I didn't get quite a chance to explain how we worked on part B here. Whoa, didn't want that. Stop. Okay, so when we take this function, which is quadratic, and set it equal to zero, quadratics have two solutions. And this one was set up as a trinomial, and with trinomials, we factor them. So rules for factoring, I'm just going to set up two sets of parentheses and figure out what can I multiply to get an x squared, and that's x and x. Then I figure out what can I multiply to get a 6, but also it must add or subtract to give me a negative 5. So I know that 6 times 1 is a 6, and if I put a negative on the 6 and a positive on the 1, those two numbers would add up to give me negative 5, which is what I was looking for. So to get the 6, I'm going to have a negative 6 times a positive 1, which is... All right, so how about I erase that? So let me erase my inside stuff here. Let me erase my inside stuff here. Let me erase this. Let's go back to factoring this thing, because I was factoring it wrong. Okay, my two sets of parentheses. What can I multiply to get an x squared? And that goes in front, x and x. What can I multiply to get a 6? And they're also, the two numbers have to add or subtract to give me negative 5. Well, earlier in the video, I did 6 and 1. Not going to work. I need 3 and 2, because 3 times 2 is 6, and a negative 3 times a negative 2 is a positive 6, and a negative 3 plus a negative 2 is a negative 5. Remember when you're factoring, these two guys multiply out, these two guys multiply out, and they have to add to the middle number, in this case, negative 5x. That's how I know I've done it correctly. When you factored your quadratic, you set each factor to zero and solve them. So if x minus 3 is equal to zero, that tells me x is equal 3. If x minus 2 is equal to zero, that tells me x is equal to 2. And those are my two solutions. So this one has a solution of x equal 3, a solution of x equal 2, and those are the two numbers. If I put them in place for x one at a time, I would get f of x to be 0. Sorry about that, but you know, what, what made me realize my mistake was when I put the 6 and the 1, when I multiplied them, I was not going to get the positive 6, which is what I needed at the end. So it's called trial and error. You try it. If you make an error, then you try something else. Okay, next concept is to determine the values for which f of x is equal g of x. What this means is just set the two equations, the two functions equal to each other, and solve for x. So let's do it. Part A, there's my f. There's my g. Let's set them equal to each other. And let's solve it for x. Well, I see some squares, and that tells me I might be with a quadratic. And so I'm going to get everything on one side. So I've got this x squared plus 1. I'm going to take over the 3x. He becomes negative. I'm going to take over the negative x squared. He becomes positive. I'm going to set him to 0 because it's quadratic. That's the only way you can solve quadratics. Get everything on one side and set it equal 0. Now let's clean this up. An x squared plus an x squared is a 2x squared. 
I've got negative 3x and a plus 1 equals 0. And it's a trinomial, so I'm going to work on trying to factor it. Actually, I'm going to pause it and you work on factoring it. Any luck with the factoring? I set up my two sets of parentheses and I ask myself, what can I multiply to get a 2 and an x squared? The well, only op option is a 2x times an x. Then I ask myself, what can I multiply to get a 1? That goes in my last position, so it was 1 times 1. Then I looked at my signs, and I said, is it possible for me to get a negative 3x in the middle? And I saw that that was a negative 1x, that was a negative 2x, which gives me a negative 3x. You can always refoil your answer to see if it's correct. Negative 1x, negative 3x, check, I'm good, so it factored. What the heck? So these are the two values of x. That, these are the two values of x that make f of x equal to g of x. The other problem is similar. It's quadratic in nature, so let's get all of our terms on one side. So I have a 0 equal a negative x squared, a positive x, a positive 2. I'm going to take the x squared over and give me a negative x squared, and the 1 over to give me a positive 1. So when I combine terms here, I get a negative 2x squared plus x plus 3. It's another darn quadratic. And the x squared is negative. And if you remember from a previous algebra course, you don't want to try and factor a quadratic when the squared term is negative. So all we basically are going to do is move all three of those terms, bring them all over to the left, so they all change to their opposite signs. And that way, I'll have the square to be positive. So when I bring them to the left, I'll have a positive 2x squared, a negative x, a negative 3, and this is something I can factor. Difficult to factor when there is a negative in front of the square term. All right, work on factoring. You may be having some trouble factoring, so you may have to go back and just do some work. You can either go to Khan Academy or something to help you with your factoring skills. But I'm going to break this guy up into a 2x times an x, because that gives me 2x squared. I'm breaking up the 3 into a 3 times a 1. I put them in those positions. I put the 3 and the 1 in those positions, because I saw that negative 3 times an x is a negative 3x. And I saw that a 2x times a 1 is a positive 2x. And if I add those, I get a negative x. Check, I'm factored right. So when I set those two factors to 0, I get a value of x equal 3 halves, <clears throat> x equal negative 1. And those are my two solutions that make f of x equal to g of x. OK, one more concept, then an application problem. This next concept is incredibly important because we will be working with all types of functions and we have to be able to find the domain of all of our functions, whether it's a graph or an equation. So we have to make an assumption. And the assumption is this. We always assume that the domain is the set of real numbers. You can either use this double line R for all real numbers or you can use the negative infinity to positive infinity notation. That is always our starting point. It's the set of real numbers. If we come across any restrictions, then those values need to be thrown out of this set of real numbers. So the restrictions we've seen before is that division by zero is undefined. I've got to make sure that does not happen in my function. And the other restriction we saw is that you cannot take the even root of a negative number. 
That is undefined in the real number system. So when I start finding domains of functions, I'm going to look at my function and see if it's in a fraction form and if it has a variable in the denominator. If it does, I'm going to set the denominator to zero and solve it because that's going to tell me the value that must be excluded from the domain. Fraction form, variable in the denominator, set that denominator to zero and throw that number out. If the function has an even root, then I'm going to set the radicand, which is the portion under the radical. I'm going to set the radicand greater than or equal to zero and solve that. This solution represents the values that are included in the domain. It's going to take some practice. So let's do that. Okay, so let's come down here. Look at your problem. Does it have a fraction? Come on, Pen, work with me. All right, does it have a fraction? Or does it have an even root? That's the first thing you're going to ask yourself. So for this first one, does it come in a fraction form that has an x in the denominator? It's not a fraction form. So guess what? There's no fraction. There's no even root. The domain is all real numbers. You can put the double line to R or the negative infinity to positive infinity, and you're done. Actually, <clears throat> if you went on every one of these problems and put all real numbers, You may just get it right if you don't do anything else with them because you're writing what our assumption is. The assumption is all real numbers. Then we're going to look and see if we need to make a restriction. So, which one of these does not have a fraction and does not have an even root besides A? D has no fraction and no even root. It has an odd root, and odd roots are okay. So this guy has no restriction. So the answer is just all real numbers. What other one has no fraction, no even root? E. No fraction, no even roots, no restriction. So I already had those correct. B and C I have to look at closely because B has an even root and C has a fraction. So if I go back up for even roots, it says if it's an even root, I set the radicand greater than or equal to zero and solve. And those are my values that are included. The radicand is 3x plus 12. So I'm going to take 3x plus 12, set it greater than or equal to 0, and solve it for x. So I'll have 3x greater than or equal to negative 12, divided by 3. x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Those are the numbers that will work in the problem. So the domain is all real numbers where x is greater than or equal to negative 4. And you can just stop with that. You could also use interval notation for that one. And I'm kind of running out of room, so I'll put it up here. Interval notation, x greater than or equal to negative 4 means we have a bracket at negative 4. It goes to infinity and stops.